My name is Will Habeck, and today I'm going to be showing you how to integrate OpenAI's GPT-3 into your Flutterflow project. So for example, I could type something like this as a question, click generate, and the OpenAI is automatically going to return the answer for me. This is great for making your project stand out, and you can actually add a lot of differentiation within your project. For example, you could ask OpenAI GPT-3 to automatically write an email on your behalf based on some information that you feed into the system. We can even ask it to translate sentences with this example. I could just write my question, click generate, and within a few seconds, it will return the translations for me. Or I could go even further and ask it to create a list of questions for me. Just type those in, click generate, and again, it quickly returns an answer. So once again, a great opportunity to make your project stand out, and it's super cheap and easy to integrate into your Flutter, Flutterflow project. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into how to actually integrate this into your project. Okay, so you can see I've gone ahead and jumped into the Flutterflow editor, and I have a basic page put together here. We have the input with a text field, which accept, accepts some text. We have a button here to click to actually generate the output. And then we have the output from a text field. I also went ahead and put some example scripts if you'd like to use these too, just to get a feel for what the project looks like. All you have to do is add a custom action to actually add this functionality to your Flutterflow project. So if I go to the custom code section, and I go to custom actions, you can see I've already created the action here. This action is already actually in the Flutterflow marketplace, so you can also find it from there. You'll go ahead and click create, and I will just show you actually what to include within that custom action. So here we're going to go ahead and put the name, so you can put get GPT-3 completion. Then you'll want to toggle on the return value and change that to a string. Make sure that is list and nullable are also unchecked. From there, we'll define the first argument, which is prompt. This is going to be a string, and it's not going to be a list, and it will not be nullable. The second argument will be max tokens. This will be an integer, and again, will not be a list and will not be nullable. The third argument is going to be temperature. That's going to be a double, not a list, but will be nullable. The prompt is actually what is fed into the OpenAI. So this is going to be whatever text, the text field, et cetera, that you actually want to be plugged into OpenAI. The max tokens goes into actually how much is returned from the AI. If you want more information on that, I've gone ahead and put a link in the description so you can read more about it. The same goes for temperature. Temperature defines essentially how creative the AI is with its output. Again, I put a link in the description so you can read more about that if you'd like to change it. Typically, we can leave these the same though. Max tokens will be 256 and the temperature will be 0.7. From there, you can just go ahead and paste the code I've already placed into um, the description via the link and everything should be good to go here. The one thing you will need to do is actually sign up for OpenAI because we'll need to grab an API key to replace the set API key here. That way you can actually call OpenAI's API uh, to get a response. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to OpenAI to show you how to do that. Okay, so you can see I've gone ahead and logged in to OpenAI. The website is beta.openai.com. Again, that link will also be in the description. It should be free for a trial, so you can go ahead and sign up there. And then you'll want to navigate to your account and go to API keys. All you need to do is click create new API key. It'll appear here. You can copy that and go into your Flutterflow project. So we'll jump right back into Flutterflow. Okay, so we're back in Flutterflow. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace the API key here with the one we just created. And then I will click save. Okay, so that's all you need to do to actually get the custom action created. You can take this from here and go into your project and connect this to whatever you want. 
So I'd recommend connecting it maybe to a button or an on change action after a couple seconds. So here, if I wanted to, I could connect the generate button to the action, which I've already done. And the prompt that I feed in is actually the, oh, is actually the input here. So I would select the input being widget state and type something. Max tokens needs to be 256. You can see I adjusted it, so some of the, the prompts are wrong here. Um, but if I go ahead and remove this type something and make it, oh, I need to make it a specific value, this will be 256. And the temperature, like I said, needs to be 0.7. Okay, so when that's all set up, then you might want to add a output variable name to it. So I just put output. And then you can see for the text here, I just set that variable to a action output and selected that here and added a default variable. Then you just need to run your project and test it. It's super easy. Uh, obviously, it will compile the custom action to make sure there's nothing wrong, but hopefully there shouldn't be in this case. And you can go on your way. Again, there's a ton of use cases here, such as generating example emails, uh, providing specific prompts or feedback, whatever it may be. And there's tons of examples you can search online. I've also gone ahead and provided some example scripts just to give you some inspiration for the project too. Hopefully this helped. If you have any problems, check out the links in the description first. Otherwise, feel free to comment and stick along for other tutorials. Thanks.